Karanadaya Kirtan. It's a morning song. And my and my projected actor song is used to sing it every morning. Ramakrishna Hayadri 
देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो छय मुदीर्य नष्ट प्रयश वेश भागवत से भाया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नष्ट की रीडिंग श्रीमद भागवत कैंटो फोर चैप्टर नंबर थर्टी वन नरदा इंस्ट्रक्ट प्रचेत टेक्स नंबर Fourteen. Maybe you know this verse. This is a well-known verse. Yatataror, yatataror mula nishecha nena. Yatataror mula nishecha nena. Tripyanti tat skanda bujo pasaka ha. Tripyanti tat skanda bujo pasaka ha. प्रणोपहारचाचुतेमुलाशेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषेषे
of the senses. Tata eva. Similarly, sarva of all demigods. Arhanam. Worship. Achuta. Of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ijya. Worship. Translation. As pouring water on the root of a tree energizes the trunk, branches, twigs and everything else, and as supplying food to the stomach enlivens the senses and limbs of the body, simply worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead through devotional service automatically satisfies the demigods who are parts of that Supreme Personality. You can repeat. As pouring water on the root of a tree, as pouring water on the root of a tree, energizes the trunk, energizes the trunk, branches, twigs, and everything else, branches, twigs, and everything else, and as supplying food to the stomach, and as supplying food to the stomach, enlivens the senses, enlivens the senses, and limbs of the body, and limbs of the body, sim. Simply worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, simply worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead through devotional service, through devotional service automatically satisfies the demigods, automatically satisfies the demigods who are parts, who are parts of, that Supreme Personality. of that Supreme Personality. Purport by his Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Sometimes people ask why this Krishna Consciousness Movement simply advocates worship of Krishna to the exclusion of the demigods. The answer is given in this verse. The example of pouring water on the root of a tree is very appropriate. In Bhagavad Gita chapter 15 verse 1 it is said Urvamulam Adasakam This cosmic manifestation has expanded downwards and the root is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As the Lord confirms in Bhagavad Gita 10.8 Aham Sarvasya Prabhava I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Krishna is the root of everything. Therefore, rendering service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, Krishna Seva, means automatically serving all the demigods. Sometimes it is argued that karma and jnana require a mixture, requ require a mixture of bhakti in order to be successfully executed. And sometimes it is argued that bhakti also represents karma and jnana for its successful termination. The fact is, however, that although karma and jnana cannot be successful without bhakti, bhakti does not require the help of karma and jnana. Actually, as described by Srila Rupa Goswami, Anya Bilasita Sunyam Jnana Karma Janavritam. Devotional service should not be contaminated 
by the touch of karma and gyan. Modern society is involved in various types of philosophical work, of, of philanthropic works, humanitarian works, and so on. But people do not know that these activities will never be successful unless Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is brought into the, into the centre. One may ask what harm there is in worshipping Krishna and all the different parts of, the, of his body in other words the demigods and the answer is also given in this verse the point is that in supplying food to the stomach the the indriyas the senses are automatically satisfied if one tries to feed the eyes or ears independently the result is only havoc simply by supplying food to the stomach we satisfy all of the senses it is neither necessary nor feasible to render separate service to the individual senses the conclusion is that by serving Krishna, in other words Krishna Seva, everything is complete as confirmed in Chaitanya Charitamrita Majjavlila Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Kama Kritahaya Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Kama Kritahaya it's also from Bhagavad Gita purport Prabhupada quotes that if one is engaged in the devotional service of the Lord the Supreme Personality of Godhead everything is automatically accomplished right you believe it simply by serving Krishna everything is automatically accomplished that is faith if you have faith, then that will, we will accept that. That's how it's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaeva Chapatita Nam Pavanidyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namah Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this very important verse is given to us by Narada Muni who is instructing the prachetas, the ten prachetas, they, they were very happy to receive Narada Muni in their ashram. And they confessed to Narada Muni that we are very attached to material life. Please enlighten us. We are similar people. We are also attached to material life. We're here in the material world. We have a lot of attachments. Prahlad Maharaj was talking to Haranyakashi Pu, his father. And his father had put Prahlad into the Guru Kula. The Guru Kula, not for devotional education, but for materialistic education how to deal with your enemies. Prahlad was learning these things. He was learning the path of Karmakanda, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. 
he was learning these things in the Guru Kula. So his father one day, but actually the, what happened, the mother, you know mothers, they, they take their child and they dress them nicely and put nice clothes on them, make them all clean, and then they go and see your father. And so Prahlad came to see his father, and father is, oh my dear son, the father was feeling so pleased, my son. And he picked his child up and put him on his lap. And then he thought, I will, I will joke with him. And he asked Prahlad, please tell me, what have you learned from your teachers? And he didn't expect Prahlad would say anything very practical. But Prahlad said to his father that I have learned that one who is in the bodily conception of life and whose only purpose in life is to satisfy the senses is like a person who has fallen into a dark well. His only hope is to go to the forest. And Srila Prabhupada said, to go to the forest means to go to Vrindavan. Vrindavan is twelve forests. So, Prahlad Maharaj told his father like that, that material life is a difficult situation. It's so much suffering. Prahlad was ta talking to all of his friends in the Guru Kula. And he was warning them that material life is just suffering from beginning to end. Sense gratification, very flickering pleasure of the senses. Sometimes, do you know that song, Bhaja Hari Mana? You sing that song sometimes? You know it, right? You know the songs. Other devotees don't seem to know them too well. Anyway, there's a nice song. I think it may be in your book, Bhaja Harimana. Sita Atapa Bhatta Varesana Edina Jamini Jagare Bipali Sevinu Kripana Durachana Chapala Sukalaba Lagare. It's very simple language. Indian people, they can easily pick up the meaning of this song. It's saying that we have to work in so many different conditions. Sometimes it's heavy rain and sometimes it's very cold and other times it would be very hot. You have to tolerate all these different conditions to work. You have to go to the job and you have to put up with all these different conditions. And you have to serve wicked and miserly people. Do you have that experience sometimes, you know? You get a job, you, know, you have to work for people who are really nasty, wicked, sinful people, and you have to work for them, you know? <laughs> you have to serve them. Why? Well, I need a job, you know, I have to survive. One devotee, he just came this morning, right? That Nimai Sachi Sutta, he had a job in Germany, but then, all of a sudden, companies got big financial problems. They paid off 150 workers. So he was one of them that got paid off. No job. It's so common these days. More and more people unemployed. There's no jobs. And in China, it's a very big problem also. They have a big population. So many people. <laughs> Difficult to. Prabhupada warned how this would happen. And they said, oh, because of technology, we come up with innovations, machines, you know, computers and digitalization, everything, and less and less jobs for people. That's the problem. <laughs> There's no jobs for people. When we had bulls to plow the field, there was work for people. They bring in tractors and the tractor takes away the work for the people. In the villages in China as well as India, there's no people in the villages, no young people. Everybody's gone to the factory, to work in the factory. 
They don't have people to plant the rice. They don't have people to, to harvest the crops. Where are they? They're all gone to the city to work in the factory. And they work in the factory for some time. Then the, then the factory closes, no job, you know, factory doesn't keep running forever. The factory also gets in difficulties and the people are all paid off, no job, and they go back home. They don't know how to work on the land anymore. They've forgotten because they've been working in factories. Kali Yuga. Anyway, uh, Lord Krishna is describing, he's giving this, not Narada Muni, he's instructing the Prachetas and he's given this wonderful example, two examples. One is pouring water on the root of the plant and the other is feeding the belly. When we water Tulsi, you know, people often pour water on the branches and on the leaves. We're supposed to put the water on the root because when you water the root, then the water will nourish all the leaves and branches. But if you pour the water onto the leaves, one day the leaf will fall off. That's what happens. And so, still stupid people sometimes in the garden, they water the leaves, and the, the leaves all fall off, the plant dies. So we have to know, water the root. And similarly, feed the belly. Uh, there's a story, the story goes, the different parts of the body had a meeting one day and they decided, why should we feed the belly all the time? Why we're putting the food in the belly? We should enjoy the food. Why the belly always enjoys the food? Yeah, why, why we're going to feed the belly? We won't feed the belly anymore. Right? So, they had a meat. we're not going to feed the belly. So the hand said, no, we're not going to put any more food in the mouth for the belly. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what happens, you know? Gradually all the different senses become weak. The hands become weak, the legs become weak. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I'm hungry. When is Pandava near Jolly Codicy? It's coming soon. When's the next decodicy? 18 June. Huh? 18 June. 18. Oh. So, do you do Pandava near Jao? Do you do near Jao here? Try. Try? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you, if you do Pandava near Jao, you know, during the day, you know, you start to feel, oh, <laughs> feel a little weak, you know. Here, the climate's not too bad. If you're in a hot country, it's really difficult somewhere where it's really hot and very difficult. But here you could do it not too, not too difficult. Anyway, still you feel weak because you're not eating, you're not drinking, and it, it's a strain on the body. And so that happened. You don't feed the belly, you don't put the different parts of the body. No, we're not going to put food in the belly anymore. No, not going to feed the belly. They all get weak. And they, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why I don't have any energy? Why I don't have any strength? Well, you didn't put any food in the belly. When we put the food in the stomach, then it distributes the energy to all of the parts of the body. So Lord Krishna gives these, uh, Narada Muni gives these two examples to the Prachetas. And Prabhupada explains how we can use them in preaching. Because people often ask us, you know, why you only worship Krishna? Actually, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, Mataparataram nanyat kinchadasti dhananjaya. There is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just like pearls are strung on a thread. Lord Krishna himself also gives examples. When we preach, we have to use these different examples. You can see Narada Muni using examples, Lord Krishna also using examples. So when we talk to people, when we explain to them about Krishna consciousness, we want to make use of these different examples. Now, Lord Krishna said, everything rests on me like 
pearls are strung on a thread. We give it like we wear our neck beads. You don't, you're not, you don't see the thread, you see the beads. So the same way, everything is resting on Krishna, but we don't see Krishna, but it's all resting on Him. So Lord Krishna says, there is no truth superior to me. No one else says that. Lord Shiva never says that. Durga never says that. Brahma never says that. All, Vishnu himself even doesn't say Lord Krishna can say it. He said, I, I am the highest truth. So it's a very powerful statement in the Bhagavad Gita. So people are asking us still, why you only worship Krishna? Why don't you worship all the other gods? Well, we explain to them that by worshipping Krishna, all the gods are satisfied. You want to please? How many gods can you please? How many demigods are there? Thirty-three crore, and a crore means ten million. So three hundred and thirty million demigods. You go to some temples, and they make a good attempt to worship all the demigods. You know, you you go to some of these Hindu temples, and they have so many pictures of so many gods. And they're trying to worship, but you can never worship all of them. We know simply worship Krishna, and by satisfying Krishna, everyone is pleased. When we opened the temple in Hyderabad, it, it was in Srila Prabhupada's time, land had been donated, and we built a temple. 1976, 77, this Sri Vaishnavas came and everything, they chanted beautiful mantras for the inauguration of the temple. So one uh, devotee was there, this one devotee, he was a sannyasi at the time, and he said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, in this city Hyderabad is that people like to worship Lord Shiva. So he said, why don't we put a Shiva Linga here? And then the when they'll all come and worship Lord Shiva and then they'll come and see our deities because we had Gornitai, nobody knows. Who is Gornitai? Who are they? You know, especially South India people don't know who they are. Even North India many times people don't know. Gornitai and then we had also, we had Radha, Radha Madan Mohan and we had Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra also not very common. So the devotee was saying to Prabhupada, we should put Lord Shiva there. But Prabhupada said, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. He said, why not? He said, because they will think everyone is the same. They will think it's all one. They will think, oh, Shiva, Krishna, all are one. All are the, that is Mayavadi philosophy. They see everyone the same. They don't understand that there is the one supreme controller and all others are his servants. Right? Ekala Ishwara Krishna or Sabritya. Every all the others, all the demigods, they are servants. Just like in the in the tree, the leaves and the branches, they are dependent on the root for their existence. Without the root, without the root providing their nourishment, the leaves and branches will die. And similarly, Lord Krishna is sustaining all the demigods. It's Lord Krishna who is in the heart of all the demigods. Lord Krishna says, Sarvasya Chaham Vridhisani Vistu. I am seated in the hearts of all living entities. So that includes all the demigods. Lord Krishna is in the heart of all the different demigods. And when we worship Lord Krishna, the demigods also become pleased. They are also satisfied by our worship of Lord Krishna. You want to please the demigods? You want to please them? You worship Lord Krishna and 
they will also be very pleased. And they will bestow their blessings. We don't need to worship the demigods independently of Lord Krishna. You, you can worship demigods, but we should worship them with the, that they are a part of the body of the Supreme Lord. Don't think of them as being independent of the Lord. They are simply one, one part of the Lord. So we can also worship, just like Sanatana Goswami, he was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. So we can also worship, we can also offer our respects to Lord Shiva and worship him. But we're not going to get love of God from Lord Shiva, but he can help us on the path to devotion. Lord Shiva is a, uh, he's in charge of false ego. He can take away our false ego. So that's something very important. You can buy Pray to Lord Shiva, please remove my false ego and purify me, fix me so that I can devote myself to the Supreme Lord. And the Prachetas, who Narada Muni is instructing here in this chapter, they had also received instruction from Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva had also taught them to worship the Supreme Lord. Lord Shiva Generally, people worship Lord Shiva for material, to satisfying their material desires. And Lord Shiva can do that very easily. That's, that's his cheating potency. He, does, he easily gives material desires, but rarely, very rarely he will give the real goal of life, which is to worship the Supreme Lord. And so you get the, the, the highest knowledge from Lord Shiva by being a devotee. Of course, Lord Shiva also has his own Sampradaya. There's a, uh, the Sampradaya which comes from Lord Shiva, in the Vishnu Swami, in the line of Vishnu Swami. So it's one of the four bona fide Vaishnava Sampradayas. And we say Vaishnavam Yata Shambhu, that Lord Shiva is also known as Shambhu, and he is the, the greatest Vaishnava. So we respect Lord Shiva as a Vaishnava, not as the Supreme Lord. So serving the Vaishnavas is also very good for us. So serving Lord Shiva. Similarly, serving demig serving different demigods, offering making offerings to them, we can do it provided we understand they're simply a part of the body of the Supreme Lord. They are not the Supreme Lord themselves, but they are a tiny part of the body of the Lord. So we should understand clearly the connection between the different demigods and the Supreme Lord Krishna. Therefore, Narada Muni is giving this example. The different demigods and so on are just like leaves and branches on the tree. They're not independent. And so we have to understand everything in this, this mood. How to, how to worship the, 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 how to worship the Supreme Lord? We can worship Him simply by chanting His holy name. But if you chant the names of the demigods, then that's a different, that's, that's an offense. Narada Muni, in his previous life, in a previous life, he was a Gandharva. And he was very, a very good looking Gandharva, and he had a beautiful voice. All the Gandharvas, you know, they sing and dance, and they can entertain people. So Narada Muni in his previous life as a Gandharva, he was traveling in the association of very attractive young women and he began to joke with them. And in a joking way he began to sing songs using the names of the demigods. And this was an offense. And the Prajapatis who were there traveling in the same, in the same vehicle they saw Narada Muni behaving in this way 
and they cursed him because of his misbehavior, because he was chanting the names of the demigods who are, who are not supreme. So that is an offense. We're only meant to do Hari Kirtan or Krishna Kirtan. We're not meant to chant Durga Kirtan or Shiva Kirtan or any of these other Devas Kirtans. We're meant to only worship the Supreme Lord by chanting the Holy Name. And because of his offense, the Prajapatis cursed him to take birth in the womb of a Sudra woman. And so next life, he, he fell from the position of a Gandharva and he took birth in the womb of a maidservant woman. Of course, he was fortunate that he got the association of uh, Bhaktivedanta mendicants and he was able to associate with them and be initiated by them. And then, next life, then he became the son of Lord Brahma. He became Narada Muni. So these previous lives, they're told by Narada Muni, he tells about these things. But here, he's talking to the Prachetas and he's telling them, you just have to worship the Supreme Lord Krishna. You don't have to worship any other God. Sometimes, you know, South, uh, people in India, they have the custom of worshipping many gods, especially in South India and Tamil people, they like to worship Kartikeya. They're fond of worshipping Kartikeya or Murga, they call them. Some, they can, in North India it's called Kartikeya and in South India it's called Murga. He's one of the sons of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva has two sons, Ganesh and Murga or Kartikeya. So they are fond of worshipping him and they worship many other gods also because generally Mayavada philosophy is everywhere. Prabhupada said, he said, scratch the surface. He said, outside they may look very nice, they're good people. You scratch the surface and then, then you see Mayavada philosophy. You know, people coming to the temple, they're coming and they're associating, they're chanting Hare Krishna and so on. But they're thinking, it's all one, all the gods are the same. I was going around Govardhan Hill one day and I was walking around Govardhan Hill and I started talking to this Indian man and he was telling me, he said, he said, yeah, I come here every Purnima, I come and to Parikrama around Govardhan. He was coming from a nearby town. And he said, every Purnima I will come now, go around the Govardhan hill every night, that night. I said, oh, you must be a great devotee of Lord Krishna. He said, yes, not only Krishna, I'm a devotee of all the gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So some, that's what happens, you know, people as you get to know people, you find a lot of Mayavada philosophy is there. So we want to give people Krishna Bhakti, only Krishna consciousness, you know. We are only Krishnites. We're, we're, our temples are for pr propagating Krishna consciousness. We want people to become inspired in Krishna Bhakti. Because it's Krishna who is the highest truth. And it's Krishna who spoke the Bhagavad Gita. And we want to go back to Godhead to be with Krishna in the spiritual world. So we have to develop that attachment for Krishna. Many people write Bhagavad Gita. They write the Bhagavad Gita and they give so many wrong interpretations. They will fill it with Mayavada philosophy. And even Prabhupada went to Geneva and they arranged Prabhupada to meet one man, a, f a Frenchman was it? He had written a book about Krishna. But he'd made so many mistakes. Prabhupada was talking to, he came to meet Prabhupada and Prabhupada was pointing out so many faults, so many errors in the man's book. So everywhere you get this, people take the Bhagavad Gita and give all their bogus interpretations. 
Only Prabhupada presented the Bhagavad Gita as it is. And not only did he present the Bhagavad Gita, but he gave us also the Krishna book. So the Krishna book should be read along with the Bhagavad Gita, because when you read the Bhagavad Gita, if you read the Krishna book, then you can understand more fully who is Lord Krishna. When he's speaking the Bhagavad Gita, we may not always appreciate so well Lord Krishna's position. Although in the Bhagavad Gita, Srila Vyasadeva has written Bhagavad Gita, he puts Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. But people think, well, there's so many Bhagavans, right? They're thinking, every, oh, Bhagavan this guy, and Bhagavan that guy, and so many Bhagavans. So you have to read Krishna book, because Krishna book, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And one man was asking Prabhupada, he said, where does it say Supreme Personality of Godhead? You just said Bhagavan Uvacha, but you translate it as the Supreme Personality of Godhead said. Prabhupada said, oh, this man's very clever. <laughs> Prabhupada said, I said Supreme Personality of Godhead just to make it clear to everyone who is Bhagavan. The man was saying, just said Bhagavan, but Prabhupada wants us to, to understand very clearly what does it mean Bhagavan when Krishna is speaking who is Krishna he is the supreme personality of Godhead there's no one equal to him so people don't have that idea they don't they, it's difficult for them to understand they're thinking Oh, it's all one, all the gods, all are the same, you know. Everywhere you get this Mayavadi philosophy. In Russia also, I saw in Russia, so many demigod things they have. They're very fun. <laughs> you know, people are attractive, you know, they like the, the different demigods. It's, it's attractive to them. You know, Ganesh is attractive to people, you know the big belly, you know, the elephant head, it <laughs> looks so nice, you know. <laughs> Where they, but, and even some people, they, they worship Ganesha as the Supreme. But, of course, they think all the gods are one, it's all one. We just, they take, pick one out, which one you like, and make him the Supreme. But that's not how it is. You have to understand, there is one Supreme over all the others. And that one Supreme Lord is Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, you can see in Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma, he, he lists different devas and different demigods and how they're all getting, how they're related to Lord Krishna, to Govinda. He talks about Ganesh, Yadpada Palava, Yadpada Palavam Vinagadaya Kumva, Dhamve pranama samaye sakanagi raja Vignam biham alasyam jagatrayasya Govinda madipursam tamaham bhajami Lord Brahma is saying that Lord Ganesh is empowered. Generally people worship Ganesh you know, to destroy obstacles. But who empowers him to remove the obstacles? Govinda. It <laughs> the, 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 the empowerment is coming from Govinda to Ganesh. To just, people like to put Ganesh in the doorway. Even in the nectar of devotion, it says we should have Ganesh in the temple or, the, or we should worship Ganesh first before we worship Lord Krishna. But Prabhupada didn't do that. Prabhupada wrote the nectar of devotion. He knows what he says. But he didn't tell us to put Ganesh there. Because, be, why? Because he, he thinks, he's worried everyone will think it's all one. All the gods are the same. So Prabhupada just put Krishna, only Krishna. Gornita is Krishna, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. He is Krishna. Jagannath, Jagannath, you know, uh, at one point, 
the, this, these people conquered the Jagannath Puri temple and they took Jagannath, they said this is a form of Buddha. They were teaching that Jagannath is a form of Buddha and the people were worshipping and they thought this is a Buddha. All of these different things are there, different misunderstandings. You, you know, this is, this is true, these things happen. This happened is history. We have to, so Prabhupada was very clear what he wanted and why he wanted it. He, he had just worship Krishna and get it right. No mistake. If you just worship Krishna, you're safe. You've got everything. Everything is there in Krishna. All the devas, all the demigods, all the varnas, all the ashrams, everything is there in Krishna. Sarvasya chahamridi sanivisto matakshmitir jnana. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matha sarvam pravartate. Krishna said, I am the source of the material and spiritual world. Everything comes from me. Those who know this, they'll worship me with all their hearts. So we have to be convinced. We have to have this, this faith. We should have that faith that it's simply Krishna who is doing everything, maintaining everything. He's the cause of everything. He's the origin of everything. Hmm? Sarva karanam karanam. Lord Brahma, he understood, he became convinced about the position of Lord Krishna and therefore Brahma Samhita is there. And when Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya found the Brahma Samhita, then he was so happy and he brought it up, he brought it with him to Jagannath Puri and he told all the devotees, you have to copy this book. And everybody made a copy of the Brahma Samhita and they all had their copy. Ramananda Rai, Swarup Dharmadhar, all the devotees who were living there in Puri, they all got copies of the Brahma Samhita by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Because he wants everyone to know, Go Vinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Pacham. That Lord Brahma worships Govinda. Okay, any question? Maharaj, thank you for the lecture. Again, I have many questions. Um, and my first question is about the demons. We hear a lot about Krishna, Lords, but um, how do the, in which form the demons appear in Kali Yuga? How do we recognize them? <laughs> well, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes there are two natures the divine and the demoniac nature. In chapter 16, the divine and demoniac nature. So the qualities of the, the, the divine, the godly people are given, and then the nature of the demoniac people is there. We recognize people not just by, you know, it's not like, oh he's a demon, he's got long hair, no. Oh, he's, he's a demon, look at the way he's dressed, he's a demon. No, that's not how you recognize people. But by their qualities, by their activities, what do they do, what, how are they behaving? So the qualities of the demon are described in Bhagavad Gita there. And Lord Krishna describes, for example, he said, the demon will think, Ishwaraham, I am the controller. Ahambogi, I am the enjoyer. Siddoham, I am perfect. Balavam, I am strong. Ahamsuki, I, I am happy. <laughs> this is how the demons think like this. Hmm. And they think, whoever is my enemy, I will have him killed. I'm going to conquer and enjoy. So this is how the demons are thinking. And they have a lot of pride. They're very arrogant. They're very greedy. 
and they get angry very easily. They're very nasty people to deal with. Um, Maharaj, Krishna transforms the hearts. Sometimes, like we've seen and uh, read in the scriptures, um, like a lot of people who committed sins, they have become godly, they, the religious person, pious people. But sometimes it also happens that a very pious person or people, um, they get transformed into into a demon or maybe not demon, but, but they, they do or they think or they uh, visualize things in a very wrong way, but they are good devotees. But why do Krishna do this? Why do why do Krishna give them you, the wrong you mean, vision? You mean they were good devotees? <laughs> yes. Right? They were good devotees at one point, but they went astray. Yes. They changed. What happens? Why does it happen? Yes. Association. Because they give up the association of devotees and they start to associate with materialistic minded people and they become like them. You take on the qualities of, of the people you associate with. Now there was one, there was one personality, Boma. He was born from the earth. He was the son of the earth, Mother Earth was picked up by Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha picked up the earth planet when, when it fell into the bottom of the Garbhodak ocean. And when Lord Varaha picked up Mother Earth, at that time she asked Lord Varaha, please give me a child. So it was arranged, Mother Bhumi gave birth to a child. That child was called Boma. And so she had her child which was born of Lord Varaha from the earth planet, the deity, the presiding deity of the earth, Mother Bhumi. And they had a son, and that son was Boma. And in, in the childhood he was very nice, he was very good, she brought him up to be a good devotee. But then he got, he went into bad association, and he started to associate with a lot of demons, like he associated with Bana, Bana Sura, other demons. So you associate with the non-devotees, you associate with the demon, you take on the qualities of these people and ultimately Lord Krishna had to come and kill that Boma, Boma Sura. Lord Krishna had to come and kill him. I just going to ask one more question. Uh, uh, this is related to demigods. So um, as you mentioned, Ganesha, Ganesha is son of Shiva, and Shiva is the greatest devotee of Krishna, Vishnu. We have a lot of respect for senior devotees, for Maharaj, for Gurus, for teachers, and if we also have respect for demigods, I mean, Krishna is Supreme Lord, there is, this is a fact, uh, and we know this, but if we also have respect for demigods, then is it considered something wrong? No, it's not wrong. We're encouraged to respect the demigods. Of course, they're all exalted, they're very exalted souls because they're doing responsible service in overseeing the administration of the universe. Lord Krishna empowers them, gives them different responsibilities in the universe. So yes, we do respect them. We should respect them. I was with Srila Prabhupada one time in London we went to a Hindu temple and they were worshipping Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And Srila Prabhupada explained to them, he said, a devotee of Krishna not only offers his respect to Brahma and Vishnu and Shiva, a devotee of Krishna offers respects even to a tiny insect because he sees the Lord is in the heart of all living entities. So certainly the demigods, they're, they're very exalt, the high, high position in the universe. We respect them, but the demigods themselves, they respect the pure devotees. They offer their respects to the pure devotees of Krishna. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Any other question? Okay. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srimad Prabhupada ki jai. Bhakti Vikna Vikna Rasinga Maharaj ki